Now let's get a look at the bigger picture. David Bonson is with us, founder and chief investment officer of the Bonson Group. Joining us here on set, great to see you. Good to be with you. How are you feeling so far about 2020? I mean, last week we had a great week. We had a jobs report, which I know you want to touch on. We have the NASDAQ at records, but the coronavirus is looming, and so are a few other things. What are your thoughts these days? Yeah, there's always things looming, right? That's sort of the whole nature of markets. I don't think that there will ever be a time when there isn't anything looming. Coronavirus just happens to be a bigger story uh, as, a, as a health epidemic, as a human story, in terms of market impact. I think the week before last had gotten way overdone, and then last week you got a chance to see some of that bounce back. There's still a lot of people that are afraid to miss out on continuing to move in the markets, and there is a real Tina trade that is on. There is no alternative. People aren't thrilled with a lot of foreign equity opportunity, and they're certainly not thrilled with the fixed income and interest rate environment. It makes U.S. equities continue to be a place to come back to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Goldman Sachs agrees with you. I mean, they were out this morning, Goldman Sachs, saying uh, the coronavirus limited impact on the U.S. economy. I think right now, though, we're certainly seeing some big moves. I mean, for the cruise liners and, you know, names like Apple and whatever. I mean, luxury retailers, a little bit of everything. Um, I wanted to get to the jobs report, which really um, wowed everybody. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it impressed you. Why? Well, I think that it was underneath the major headline that you got a chance to see that labor participation force yep. hitting a seven or eight year record, the wage growth right there at 3.1%. The underemployment number continuing to come lower. So the headline employment number and the number of jobs created is still a big deal. Uh, the rolling averages, because you're going to have a couple months here and there that might look like they're a little lower, but that kind of rolling quarterly average has mm -hmm. continued to be very strong. But right. that labor participation force is a big deal for the society. It's more people feeling like work is a possibility. They want to be useful. They want to be contributing to the economy. And that number had really cratered uh, for some years after the financial crisis. And to have that labor force participation rate show improvement, it really shows, as you said, it shows the optimism of folks saying, hey, you know what, I'm going to go out and look for the for a job. I'm not discouraged. In fact, I think I actually may be able to get one in this great economy. So that's sort of the idea behind it. And yeah. then that'll boost folks' wages and GDP ultimately. I know you've been watching oil very closely. OPEC has decided not to hold an emergency meeting on the heels of the coronavirus. It's been holding around 50 bucks. Um, what are your thoughts as, um, you know, basically, I'll tell you, City today came out and said they see world oil prices sliding 13%. Yeah, they haven't had a great track record at getting these things right over the last several years, and nor has anyone else. And it's actually one of the most interesting things for someone who's constantly having to study financial markets, as I do, is I never see anyone getting this stuff right. Really, oil prices somewhere between the high 40s and low 70s, it's almost all the same number. There isn't right. a big difference economically between 53 and 68. At 68, it's on the high side, but it isn't hurting consumer spending. 50, it's on the low side, but it's still marginally profitable for U.S. producers. You'd have to have a meaningful drop below 50 till it becomes a sign of economic weakness. But transitory things, especially something that could literally be out of the news in a matter of weeks, like coronavirus, is not something that's going to affect global demand sustainably. So as we talk, and you said, even at $70, it's not inflationary. Um, the VIX, you say, is not the enemy. The volatility, yeah. I should say, to be more precise. You're not worried about some of the back and forth action. Um, what are you advising some of your clients? I know you have over a, a billion and a half under management. What do you advise the clients? Do you say buy the dips? Do you say to buy certain sectors, avoid others, maybe bonds? How do you break it down? Well, we only manage money on a discretionary basis, so it's not what we're advising clients to do. It's what we're doing on behalf of our clients, and we're buying it, and we want to take advantage of those dips. I do worry about volatility in this sense, not about it being too high. I worry about prolonged volatility that is too low. I think that sucks out the risk premium that you get as an equity investor. The price we pay for incurring it with with more volatility, more up and down movements that can be somewhat of a headache at times, that's where we get this uh, excess pr premium in our return over time. Right. So we want volatility. You don't want excessively low volatility like you had in 2017, nor do you want the same level of volatility in 2018 that was a bit elevated. So what you're seeing right now this year is quite normal. Had a big move, move higher coming off the How do optimism. We make money? 
You make money by buying the things that are undervalued and holding them over time. We're dividend growth investors at the Bonson Group. We manage over $2 billion focused on companies growing their dividends. Right now, the energy sector has deep value, 44% lower than its five-year average valuation. Only a sector in the S&P trading below a five-year average valuation. Yeah, and that, that pays out some good dividends. It's great to see you. David Bonson, founder and chief investment officer of the Bonson Group. Thanks, David, so much.